David, I'll pass it over to you. We could talk a little bit about the dynamic category filtering add-on and how you can use it on your site. Yeah, so the dynamic category filtering add-on, it's been around for a while. It's used on a lot of websites, but there was a recent update which kind of brought it back to light and, and made us want to uh, highlight that recent update a little bit more. It expands the functionality a bit. So first, we'll go over what the dynamic category filtering add-on actually is. So it's a, a different search module for members, specifically member categories, that you can place in the sidebar, say on your member search results page. So users of the website will be able to check off multiple member categories that they wanna filter through rather than like using the default sidebar search module where if they're gonna select a category, they only select one category at a time from a dropdown list. So the recent update with this was the addition of the location search field. So instead of only being able to select multiple categories to search members through, users can now also add a location to their search. Overall, this does create a little bit more of an interactive search experience, allowing users to dynamically filter and, and check off specific categories that they wanna see members within, rather than using the default sidebar search module where if they're going to be selecting a member category, they only select one category at a time from a drop-down list. It also allows users to better set their search criteria and more finely tune the search that they're conducting on their website. And again, with the recent update, they can also now enter a location as well. So if they only want to see specific members meeting certain criteria in a certain location, they can now do that uh, through the search module, the dynamic category filtering search module. And last thing, it is a pretty plug and play search module. There's not really too much to configure, but there is one setting, the uh, match setting. So you can choose to use a broad match or a strict match. So this determines what results are displayed to the user when they're conducting their search. So the broad match setting, which is the default setting, that will result in a larger search result pool. If a user selects uh, multiple member categories, say they're searching for auto repair shops and they select the brake inspection category and the dent repair category, then with the broad match setting, they'll be presented with members who are listed in any of the categories that they selected. So they'll see members who do brake inspections or do dent repair. If you use the strict match setting, they'll only see members who match exactly the criteria that they select. So if they select to see members who do brake inspection and dent repair with the strict match, they'll only see members who do both brake inspection and dent repair. Just to give an example, kind of better visualize how this would work, it's pretty similar to the uh, search filter that you would find on websites like Amazon and Yelp. On Amazon, you know, when you search for a product on there, on the left-hand sidebar, there'll always be some sort of filtering option. So in this example, I think we were searching for power drills. And so there were some options if we, uh, depending on the drills material, the power source, things like that. So in both Amazon and Yelp, they kind of follow that more uh, strict match setting. So if you're searching for a power drill and you choose the material metal and the power source battery, Amazon will only show you products that are made of metal and that are battery powered. They're not gonna show you power drills that only meet one of those criteria. And the same thing with Yelp. If you select the cheapest price option and you're looking for a Mexican restaurant, they'll only show you the cheapest Mexican restaurants. They're not gonna show you all of the cheapest restaurants and all of the Mexican restaurants. So. Both of those examples kind of follow that more strict match setting. And so in the middle, we have the sidebar search module, the member search module for the dynamic category filtering add-on. You can choose if you wanna have that location field at the top or not. That was the recent update that went along with this. And then below is where the user would be able to select which categories they want to see members for. So in this example, the price, I think these were all subcategories price amenities and cuisine. The price subcategory has been collapsed or, or minimized, but amenities and cuisine are expanded so we can see the sub-subcategories within those. So somebody could be searching for 
a restaurant in a certain location and they can narrow it down by cuisine. And if they're gonna be going with their kids, maybe they only want to see restaurants in that location that serve that cuisine that have uh, specifically stated that it's a good environment to bring kids. So it allows for more specific filtering rather than just utilizing the default member search module in the sidebar. Also with this, and David, we actually didn't talk about this, but if you're gonna be utilizing this type of search on the sidebar of the member search results page, actually limiting the subcategories your members can select will guide them and, and create better context for them to really select the categories that they belong in and want to be found in. And obviously we can give members limit, like you can only select 10 subcategories or whatever makes sense for your industry and your and your website. But this puts better context and value on the subcategories that the members are choosing to be listed in because we can actually see in the sidebar what the options are there. We just wanted to, to show the different variations that are available with the dynamic category filtering sidebar search module. So you can choose if you only want to allow users to uh, select multiple top level categories, top categories and subcategories, top categories, subcategories, and sub sub categories. Or if you, maybe your website, you're only using one kind of catch all general umbrella top level category, there would be no real purpose to uh, require a user to select that uh, when they're conducting their search if all the members are gonna be in that top category anyway. So in that case, you might only want to allow users to select uh, sub-level categories and sub-sub-level categories to search within. And then with the recent update, there's now options uh, or variations of this uh, search module that include that location field. And so here are the use cases. There definitely are uh, specific use cases where this would certainly be helpful and valuable to use, but there are others where it might actually not be worth it to use. Typically, uh, in most cases, you may want to use the dynamic category filtering uh, search module in the sidebar of the member search results page. If the overall experience for users when they're searching for members on your site is relatively simple. So if you have a pretty limited member category structure, you don't have that many categories to display because uh, we don't want to have a, a whole long list of categories taking up you know, the entire height of the sidebar. It, that might uh, be a little overwhelming when visitors come to that page and they're trying to figure out exactly what they want to select, what criteria to select to filter through the members. And the real purpose of this would be if you want to allow your visitors to be able to search multiple member categories at once. So like in that example we showed, and we'll show you a demo uh, kind of in practice of how this would work as well. But like if you have local businesses, restaurants, say for example, and you want to allow your users to kind of have more of that like Yelp type search experience where they can select different criteria and filters to really narrow down their search, that's when uh, the dynamic category filtering search would really come in handy. When you may not want to use it is if you do have more of a complex member search experience. So if you're gonna be wanting to have users enter in a keyword, select top categories, subcategories, also locations, at that point, you may be better off using just one of the default search modules in the sidebar of the member search results page. Also, like I mentioned, if you've got dozens and dozens or maybe hundreds of member categories, in that case, if it's not necessary for users to select multiple categories at once to search within, again, you might be better off just using one of the default search modules where instead of presenting all the categories in a long checkbox list, it's more of a, uh, a drop-down selection that they can just pick from. Then you might wanna use it in that case. And then also, if you're just not utilizing uh, the member search results page at all on your website, you know, maybe you're using the website kind of more as a, a corporate site or a website just to publish content on, then in that case, you wouldn't have a need for the dynamic category filtering add-on because again, it's only for searching members. Also in that last note, if you're if you are just searching members by their name it's a directory lookup based on name then you don't really need the uh, the category filtering there either so those are some good examples there of when to use it and maybe when you don't want to use it and i think with that said we do have a site setup which kind of demos 
um, how this works. And I guess, David, now would be a good time to kind of dive into this here. Yeah, definitely. This should be uh, kind of one of the more common use cases for utilizing this, this search module. Perfect. Yep. And in this case, actually, we just have very simple category structure set up. But in this example, it's built kind of for like a local localized business directory, like a yellow pages. But we're just focusing on two different categories here. And where we'll start is let's go to the dashboard area. Let's first show you guys how we've set up our mini example of our categories. So we'll go to uh, my members and go to member categories. And in this case, we just have two top level categories, but of course you could have more for the broader industries that a business might be a part of. Uh, we have restaurants and auto services. From here, we have sub-level categories. And I'm gonna go ahead and filter the parent category so we can see what we have for restaurants. So for restaurants, we have a meal served, type of cuisine, and the type of amenities they have. For auto services, we have the vehicle make, uh, type of repairs, and type of detailing services they may offer. And when we move to the sub-sub-level categories, this is where it gets more granular. And let's go to uh, cuisine, for example. Cuisine was a subcategory of restaurant. So here now we have our different cuisines, which is barbecue, Italian, vegetarian, uh, amenities, the restaurant amenities. Uh, so uh, amenities uh, was a sub-level category of restaurants and it has sub-sub-level categories, good for kids, outdoor seating, reservations, Wi-Fi would be another one as an example. And if we look at the, uh, the auto uh, repair, so under repairs, so for we had automotive as the top level category, repair is a sub-level category and the type of repairs, general repairs, diagnosis and inspection, maintenance, uh, and it can be more. Uh, so you can see how we've kind of set this up, broader categories, auto services, restaurants, sub-level categories, and it's meant to be that the sub-sub levels are nested nicely under the sub-level categories. Uh, so when we go to the website, we are on the home page, and we've actually done a couple things. Uh, we have basically just the, the, the broad categories here, auto services and restaurants. We also have it here as the, uh, the search module here. If you want to just search auto services or restaurants, you could have more filtering here if you want. But let's go ahead and click on restaurants. And we can see here we're using the dynamic category filtering here in the sidebar. Now, if this was a website of, for example, of a very small region like Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I click on restaurants, really there may not be a reason to add the location search in addition to this because we already know that we're searching, for example, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, but if your website has a focus in multiple cities and states, it would make sense to have the location search, uh, the search field there, and we'll add it there in just a moment. Um, so we can see here we have uh, just three sample restaurants here, uh, barbecue restaurant, uh, cafe, and an Italian restaurant. So if we select uh, an option here such as outdoor seating, we can see here all three of these still have the outdoor seating and we have strict search turned on for this so the, re the, the results are going to have to meet all the criteria. Now let's switch to Italian here and we can see now there is only one result and if we search to uh, now if we also select barbecue we do not have any results but if we now remove Italian with outdoor seating we have the other result blood sows barbecue. Um, now, if we go back to the home page, you can see how that works, pretty self-explanatory. We'll actually use the search here. Let's do auto services and search that from the home page. You can see here we're presented with the subcategories and their sub-subcategories here. We're not repeating the top level category on this page. That was a choice. Let me go back here. As David mentioned here, the category filtering options in this example, we're using the sub-level category and the sub-sub-level category just to create a more specific uh, search experience. What we could do alternately is have a, a list of all our categories on another page and it brings you to the uh, specific search page of that top level category. But again, we, we are seeing the sub level and their respected sub sub level categories here. Uh, so the same logic would work here. So let's say we are just looking for Audis and it looks like all three of these uh, automotive uh, auto uh, repair shops do that. Let's look at paint protection. Only Lucy's Auto Center offers paint protection and Audi. 
Now let's change that strict match to a broad match and see what happens as we select uh, some options here. So let's go to... I believe it might be an advanced setting if you search dynamic category filter. It is an advanced settings. setting. You are correct. Thank you. Dynamic category filtering, turning on broad match or not. Also here, so while we're here, dynamic category, uh, have the accordions toggled opened or closed. Let's actually close them in this case so we can see both. Thank you for that, David. So let's go back to the site here and refresh the page. There we go. So now it's anyone who does Audi and paint protection. If we get rid of the, and we can see now these are toggled uh, open or closed, they should start toggled closed. But if we remove Audi now, let's see here, this one has something selected, so it remains open. Uh, only Lucy's Auto Center does paint protection. But if we want someone who does Cadillacs as well, um, J and E also does it. And let's remove paint protection. And Lucy's and J and E do Cadillac. And let's also do Audi. And all three of them do Audi and Cadillac. Thank you. So just so you guys know, yeah, go to your advanced settings. There's two settings uh, around this dynamic category. So you can search that. So this is an add-on by BD. If you have the VIP add-ons clip, you have it. And if you want to add this to your sidebar, let me show you how you can do that. We can go to the admin area. I'll start from the dashboard. And how you can choose the search module used on member search results pages is pretty simple. If you go to my content and edit post settings, we want to search for the, uh, the member listing one. I'll search for listing, member listing right there. And if we go to search results design and additional settings, it's a little granular here, but if we scroll down, it says sidebar search module to use. And you can see what we've selected is the sub plus sub sub level category filtering, the dynamic category filter that is sub and sub sub level category. Uh, and if you want to use just regular search modules, there's keyword only, keyword and location, top level category, so on and so forth. You, you can even show you know, coupon searches on the member results page if you wanted to, but you'll see here if you scroll down um, the bootstrap theme dynamic category filtering options uh, here. And each one has a corresponding one with location. So now let's look at the sub and sub sub level with location. We'll change that and swap it out, save the changes. And we should see a location search field here now. And there it is there. So it looks pretty nice there, it looks nice. But you can see if you have too many categories, uh, this may become too cumbersome for users. It, it just depends. Um, I've seen sites with long, you know, airline booking sites and things like that, that have kind of long sidebars there. The solution for that, if it is necessary for users to select multiple categories at once, you could always choose uh, to enable that advanced setting so that these categories start collapsed by default. Very good point. And they will remain open if they have uh, something selected in them. Otherwise, they will, if you have that setting turned off, then they will start closed as opposed to opened. So actually, that's a very good point there. So let's see here. Let's search for uh, Austin. Austin, Texas, we do a search. So J and E is there. And if we want to do paint protection, which they don't offer, we can see here, we listed their subcategories. And we have to hit search now. We see that it is not there. Let's remove the, uh, the location. We see Lucy has that there. And let's do Audi and let's search. And let's do Audi. We see all three of them in Austin, Los Angeles. You see a map here of them all. And let's actually just search Los Angeles now. And we just have two people who offer Audi auto services in Los Angeles here. And uh, this is with the example of having the search by location. When you have the search by location, you're gonna to wanna to click on the search now button uh, because it wants to make sure that you're done inputting the location that you want to search as well as the options that you wanna select here. I think that pretty much covers it. David, did we leave anything out here? I think that's it. Again, the main use case for this would be uh, if your users need to be selecting multiple member categories to search through at one time.